Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about another AC limitation of the op amp, and that is that of slew rates. Um, we call it an AC limitation because um, the same as bandwidth, it limits the maximum operating frequency of the op amp. Um, the slew rate is defined as the maximum rate of change of the output voltage of an amplifier. So slow rate, which I'm going to call SR for short, uh, we could say is uh, dv out dt maximum. Now when we looked at the relationship between bandwidth and rise time, uh, if we remember for a, a step input signal, if this is my uh, V8 signal, the in signal, uh, obviously my ideal output signal will just uh, follow the V in signal. Let's imagine I have just a voltage follower. But in the case of a bandwidth limitation, the response that I got was something that looked something like this, like a decaying exponential. And so this, we will say, this will be the response of a circuit that is bandwidth limited. If we get a slow rate limitation, um, the type of response we're going to get is very different. It's actually a straight line. It's basically um, this uh, dv out dt maximum, the rate of change, which is basically the slope of that line. Uh, so the slope of this line will be the slow rate. And uh, if we get something like this, uh, first thing we need to notice is that it is a nonlinear type of effect. Um, and this will be the characteristic of a circuit that is slow rate limited. Slow rate limited. So two very different responses. Now let's take a look at um, the expression for a slow rate. And most importantly, what is the maximum operating frequency of an op amp? given us a certain value of a slew rate, because the slew rate will typically come in the data sheet of the op amp, and from that we can derive the maximum value of frequency that we can operate the op amp at without running into nonlinear distortion with the op amp still operating as a linear device. Um, of course, for an ideal op amp, we will want the slew rate to be equal to infinity. For a, a practical op amp or a real op amp, uh, the slew rate, it's going to vary. We have been talking about the 741 uh, in earlier examples. So for 741, if we look at the data sheet, the slew rate is about uh, 0.5 volts per microsecond. And it's going to vary depending on uh, the version of the device that you get, but it should be around, around that much. Uh, there are better devices than that. For example, um, the LM318 will have a slew rate which is about um, 50 volts per microsecond, so about 100 times better. So we expect that that will be a better op amp for uh, higher speed applications. All right, let's go ahead and come up with an expression for uh, the slew rate limiting frequency. Uh, let's imagine that we have an op amp and uh, configure so that we have a sinusoidal output. Now, the reason why we pick a sinusoidal output is because it is a very representative output, given that any signal, any periodic signal, can be expressed as a sum of sinusoids. If we think about uh, the Fourier series of a, sinus of a um, periodic signal, can be expressed as a sum of sinusoids. And so, uh, and then we can apply superposition, and so we can always um, express the output of an amplifier, the output to a periodic input signal, uh, as a sum of sinusoids of different frequencies. So it is, in a sense, the most representative of the um, of the signals. So let's imagine our output signal is of the form V out, some amplitude, capital VO, times the sine of omega t. I can take the derivative of this, dV out dt, and it's going to be equal to omega times V out times the cosine of omega t. And now uh, the maximum value of this um, this expression, the VLDT, uh, it's going to be when the cosine has a 
uh, in absolute value, I should say, when the cosine has a value of 1 or minus 1, right? The cosine of omega t is a function that is going to be oscillating in value between plus 1 and minus 1. And so my dv out dt maximum is going to be omega times v out. Um, now that value of omega, that particular value of omega that makes this equation hold is going to be um, the slew rate limiting frequency. I'm going to refer to it as omega sub sr. And uh, this v out, dv out dt max is actually equal to the slew rate. If I want to express this in terms of the frequency in hertz, it will just be uh, 2 pi times f sr times v out. And from here, I can solve for uh, FSR in terms of the slew rate. FSR being the slew rate divided by 2 pi times V sub out. Uh, so this would be what's known as the slew rate limiting frequency. In frequency, also referred to as uh, the full power bandwidth. Uh, both things refer to the same thing. It's just uh, the maximum frequency at which I can operate my amplifier before I run into nonlinear distortion due to the slow rate limitation. Or full power bandwidth. Um, if I have an amplifier, let's say, and I am running into, um, let's imagine that this is my expected output signal, my, my ideal V out. I'm expecting to see perhaps, I don't know, a sinusoidal signal as a function of time. If I were running into um, a bandwidth limitation, I'm going to call this V out, uh, bandwidth limited. What I expect to see is a, um, a decrease in the, if the amplitude with respect to my expected value. Uh, the original output, let's say, uh, V out, the amplitude of the signal, will be equal to the closed loop gain times the amplitude of V in. Uh, but remember that after I, I reach a frequency that is higher than my closed loop bandwidth, my gain starts decreasing at the rate of negative 20 dBs per decade. And so if I am at a frequency that is higher than my closed loop bandwidth, I expect my amplitude will be smaller uh, with respect to the ideal um, or mid-band amplitude. And so I expect to see something that has less amplitude than, than the ideal. If I am running into slew rates limitations, what I expect to see is that uh, in the in the regions where I have the highest slopes, the highest uh, dV out dt, basically, rate of change of output voltage, I expect that my op-amp is not going to be able to change its output as fast, and so it's just going to change it as fast as it can. And so what I'm going to start seeing is a, a triangular shape wave, so I'm going to lose my sinusoidal shape. Initially, if I start increasing the frequency, initially I will see that um, at the points where I have the highest slope, that are the zero crossings in the case of a sinusoidal signal. Uh, but then eventually, if I keep increasing my frequency past my FSR, uh, then what I will see is a, a very significant triangular shape. So I'm going to exaggerate this here. And this would be um, basically a sign that uh, I'm running into a slew rate limitation. So this will be my slew rate limited output. Notice again that the, the bandwidth uh, is a linear type of effect, whereas slew rate is a nonlinear type of distortion. Why do I say that? Well, the bandwidth is going to decrease the amplitude of your signal, but it's not going to alter the frequency content of your signal. So if um, whatever you know the frequencies you had at your input, those are the frequencies that are going to show up at your output with or without bandwidth limitation. Uh, with the slew rate limitation, you are introducing uh, new frequency components, and therefore it's a nonlinear type of effect. The output frequencies are no longer the same as the input frequencies. 
And um, if you were to do a spectral analysis, you will see um, in the output frequency components at frequencies that were not appearing uh, in your input signal. Uh, they're, they're caused by uh, different effects, uh, in both cases capacitors, but different types of capacitors. If you remember from uh, our study of, um, of op amps more at the transistor level, the bandwidth limitations were due to the internal capacitances of your of your components of your transistors, whether they be BGT or MOSFET or whatever type of transistor you're building your op amp with. They have internal capacitances. Those are the ones that were causing the bandwidth limitation because they create essentially low pass filters and therefore low pass filter type of responses with the resistances, the seven resistances that are connected um, across the terminals. Whereas the slew rate limitation is also caused by a capacitor, but it is caused by the compensation capacitor, the capacitor that we uh, introduce as the Miller capacitor that is connected across uh, input and output of our gain stage across the feedback path intentionally uh, to, um, to bring our dominant pole to a lower frequency position in order to increase our gain and phase margin in order to make our amplifier more stable. Uh, that capacitor obviously needs to charge and discharge as the, as the output signal uh, moves from one position to another. And a capacitor cannot charge and discharge uh, uh, instantaneously. Uh, it takes a certain amount of time. Essentially the equation for the capacitor, so I'm gonna say here this is due to uh, compensation capacitor. Basically the equation uh, for a capacitor is that I equals C dV dt and therefore the uh, rate of change of voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to the current divided by the capacitance. And so the only ways you could have an instantaneous uh, rate of change of voltage is whether you have an infinite current, which typically is not going to be the case. We're not going to have we're going to have a finite uh, amount of current available from our supplies, uh, or a zero value capacitor, which obviously we have introduced intentionally a capacitor in the order of typically uh, tens of picofarads in order to make our amplifier stable. Um, and so you can see the dVdt is going to be a constant value. Your um, your dVdt maximum is going to be your maximum output current divided by your capacitor. And therefore, it's a linear uh, rate of change. And that's the triangular shape. Whereas the bandwidth limitation is due to um, uh, internal transistor capacitances. and the, um, the low-pass filter responses that they generate. So uh, two different effects. It's important to distinguish them. Uh, they're both AC limitations. They both limit the maximum amount, uh, the maximum frequency that you can operate your op amp in the linear region. Uh, in the case of slew rate limitation, it's typically going to affect more large signals. Uh, the larger the value of V out in this expression, uh, the lower the value of FSR. Uh, whereas the bandwidth limitation is something that you're typically going to see more at uh, smaller signals. But uh, oftentimes you will see a combination of both slew rate and bandwidth. If you want to know what is the uh, the maximum frequency that you can operate your op amp at, you really need to consider both the bandwidth uh, limitation or the closed loop bandwidth as well as the slew rate limiting frequency and the smaller of the two quantities is going to be uh, the true bandwidth for your amplifier. Thank you.